Hi everyone, we are glad to be here today to talk about one of our projects and how we build a streaming data pipeline for train delay processing. Um, my name is Alexandre Berger. I'm a data architect at ITNOVEM, which is one of the IT branch of SNCF, working on the digital transformation of the group. Uh, I'm accompanied today uh, by Haola Gribi, data engineer working with me on several projects. Um, so, we were uh, looking for a long time uh, a streaming use case uh, in our team. And today we are glad to share with you uh, how we provide uh, qualified data using Spark Streaming and Delta to other entities of our companies. And how we build our pipeline in a few weeks with a, a small team. So, SNCF is a French train company and one of the biggest in the world. There is more than 270,000 employees making possible than 14 million people are traveling under 15,000 trains every day. Under each of them, we are working at Data and AI Factory, uh, which is aim goal is to accelerate innovation at SNCF. For that, we are central, centralizing the project of the different entities and helping them to extract value uh, from their data. So we are supporting teams from modeling and conception to the industrialization of their solution. One of our mission is also to provide qualified data for the different entities of the group. And Brea is one of them. So today we are going to talk about one of the, our data sources called Brea. Um, beacons are installed all along the ride and permit to have a full cover of train passage all over our well rail network. BRAC contains two kinds of information. First, observation. Events are triggered at each train passage containing real and theoretical time of passage. It can be uh, generated from automatic tracking system or sized by a traf traffic officer if there are some issue or mistake. The second one is incident. Um, incident occur when an un abnormal situation disrupt rail operation. It could be wildfire, accident, strike. So brand information I received and sent to other. Then our team clean and enrich it. The, the data in order to make available a unified and qualified data to all the entity of the group. So during a project, there were two main um, goals. The first one was to build a real time data processing to monitor traffic and map the propagation of train delay. The second one was to expose the output of our data in the best way depending on the consumer, Power BI, REST API, or directly in data flight through the data lake. So just to give you uh, some example of different projects who are using our Brea data. The first one is Dunfer, is a model driving behavior between two train stations in order to simulate traffic and schedule work on the rail. The second one, Prévision Rota, which use, among other data, Brea, in order to predict train delays. So let's now talk about our architecture and how we ingest the data on all the data process processing we did. So in, a, in our pattern architecture, we are receiving the data through MQ series and event app, which is the source of our um, Spark streaming, um, Spark streaming through Databricks. Then we are making our different ingestion process and putting the data directly to the data lake through Delta format. Uh, some one of the pipeline is using directly the stream process through Power BI on user can um, visualize them through the dashboard. Other users on project can use um, the data we, we give to them through uh, 
an API or directly through the through the data lake using the Delta format. We decided to use Delta format to store our data for two main reasons. The first one is the ACID transaction and full DML support. Because the data received needs to be updated and deleted. So Delta pr provide more control to manage uh, our big data sets. The second reason is the unified batch on streaming source and sync. Um, and the possibility to simplify our Lambda architecture. Depending on the process, they can use a result in batch or streaming mode. And now I'm going to let Raola talk about our, um, our, our data process. So hi, everybody. So let's talk about our data pipeline. The input of the pipeline is the observation data, which is flow of event received during the train passage on Bacon, which is the type of sensor fixed in the rails. This data, as Alexander explains, come mainly from Bacon, so from an automated system, but it can be modified by operating agent, and it can be also deleted or self-corrected by the sensors. So the first stream, we set up is used to make the delay information reliable. For each train passage, we want to keep only the last and the complete the last and complete information. In the diagram, this is the blue part of the diagram. It's composed of three processes, P1, P2, and P3. P1 is a data quality management process. We apply rules that reject the rows that do not bring a value, like rows with an empty circulation that times. P2 is an enrichment process to locate the event, uh, so to add GPS coordinate, because events are initially landmarked in the SNCF network. And then P3 is the process of keeping only the last complete version of the event. So when receiving a new row in a micro batch, we apply an aggregation to group event with the same ID, produce from each group a single consolidated event, and then we merge the result uh, of the micro batch processing with the stream output, which is a, 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 data, a data lake table. We needed a storage with full DML support. This is why we use a data lake as an output format for this first stream. The second stream is, uh, is the orange part of the diagram. It's consuming data from the output of the first stream. So delta here is a sink and uh, a source. The second stream is used to rebuild train traffic in terms of circulation, which is departure terminal couple at a given date. And there are many observations during the circulation and many version of uh, observation. So the second stream in terms of spark processing is a stream to stream join between even target departure and even target terminal, plus a join with referentials to identify the type of train, its regional train, its TGV, and to identify the station. So as you can see, we split our, process our processing into two streams and we added a silver table so it comes from two limitations that we faced with Spark streaming. The first is that sequencing aggregation is not supported in structured streaming. And our code was designed from the beginning to respect this constraint. That's why we have two separate processing blocks separated by a disk write. The second uh, limitation is that some writing mode is not supported, uh, supported after stream to stream join. So writing mode in update uh, mode after stream to stream, uh, writing in update mode after stream to stream join is not supported today in Spark. Spark streaming, that's why we used an intermediate table, the server one. We wrote in this intermediate table in append mode load load it and then uh, save rows uh, in a pant mode. So let's do a quick demonstration here. In the development phase, we use notebooks to implement and run our data processing. 
We used one notebook per stream. Each stream has a dedicated cluster. So, this is the first stream, observation, with observation cluster. The second one is the circulation server with dedicated cluster as well. And same for the third one. Those cluster have different configurations. The stream that I'm showing around 24 hours consuming the event hub and writing in two gold delta table. State for transformation, which requires the use of state store, are bounded with watermarks and temporal join constraints. So watermarks values are defined using a representative data sample. As you can see here, we have used a watermark of 15 seconds along late data to be integrated in the aggregation result. And we added a max buffer time of six hours in the stream to stream join. Notebook mode helped us to quickly produce result. But once the code is stable and the compute resources are tuned, we have switched to the SSA framework, which is a project template that allow pipelining data transformation. So this is our framework. The whole project, as you can see here, in the main function is a pipelining of a set of transformations that are described in the transformer package here. This framework allows to focus on functional needs by describing the transformation without bothering about pipelining, monitoring, logging, which are integrated into the framework. The framework as well makes it possible to push certain best practices such as static type safety with the use of datasets. It integrates as well a wrapper over different formats of readers and writers. So one of the goals of this use case is to share visualization showing the propagation of train delays. The visualization tool that we are using is Power BI, and our goal table is in Delta format. We needed to connect Power BI to Delta to Delta Lake. So how to do it? We have two existing solutions, which are the Spark connector and the Simba connectors. The Spark connector is natively integrated into Power BI, but it suffers from high latency. The Simba connector is not native and it suffers from poor integration with Power BI. Databricks have introduced a new connector last September, which is the Azure Databricks connector. And this is the solution that we are using this project. It's native and we did not notice a, a high latency, which can be easily seen by an end user. So what we want to give to an end user are board of this type, showing the state of the trains when passing over a bright sensors. So the purple color indicate that the train, uh, the train is late the blue color for train on time and the green color for train circulating ahead of the theoretical passage time. This board allow to have a snapshot of the network and that is updated in real time. Let's move to the next part, what we learned from this mini use case. First point is that it is more efficient to separate the compute resource by stream. So one stream equal one cluster. This way we make the processing less error prone and we avoid memory errors. Uh, the second point that it's uh, recommended to dedicate a small cluster to the BI connection, uh, we will avoid undesired cause of latency. And uh, Databricks will soon introduce cluster optimized for this use case, 30 clusters. The next important point is to add time constraint to stream to stream join. Uh, in fact, the challenge of generating join uh, result uh, between two stream data is that at all times, the view of the data set is incomplete for both sides, making uh, making uh, making match find match is uh, is more difficult. That any row received can match with any future row yet to be received. Therefore, we need to keep in memory the two stream inputs so that we can match all future um, future inputs with uh, past inputs. 
But if we don't put a time limit, we risk running out of memory. This is why adding the information how long event need to be buffered is important. For example, in our case, we know that our circulation duration do, do not exceed six hours. So we set max time between the reception of event tag departure and event tag terminal to six hours. The last point is watermarks for aggregation and some type of operation like drug duplicate. We should limit uh, the time to keep the state in the state store with watermarks and uh, watermarks value depend on, on data. So what's next? Um, in a global manner, first, um, we are working with Databricks for a long time now, and we are going to continue using the support to optimize our users for workshop and support. We are going to continue making patterns and architecture usable for the whole company in order to mit mitigate risk and increase productivity. We are probably going to work on streaming, um, Spark streaming process for the next uh, couple of workshop. Um, the next step of our project is to improve our AP exposure. We are working of making available all our different data in a synchronous way. In global manner, we are going to increase our project development and continue to make value about all the data we have. Thank you for your attention. Have a wonderful data and AI summit.